Yay! Well, well done, Gina. G- what? Did I well, do that right, Keith? Well done. I, I, it, okay. worked, it worked for me. Woo! <laughs> good. I'm happy it worked for you. I'm so happy when it can work for you. Yes. That's what it's all about. I want to keep you happy. Um, good morning. I mean, that's your role as the woman, right? Keep me happy. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, actually, let's talk about that for a second. Wait, 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 wait. Let's let's do a very informal welcome to Women Your Mother <laughs> Warned You About, the podcast that makes sales sexy again. We're going rogue today with our introduction. I'm Gina Tremarco. Say hello, Rachel Tipton. Hello. It's from Rachel Pitts. I'm Mrs. Pitts Oh, that's now. right. I can't get used Formally to Formerly Rachel Tipton. You know what? Actually, okay. I keep saying, like when I was doing sales calls yesterday, I started, it was very odd because I'd be like, hi, this is Rachel. Rachel. It's Rachel with BRT. <laughs> and then I'd be like, then I accidentally said Rachel Tipton. And I was like, it's Rachel Pitts, formerly Tipton. And I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> it's tricky. And and over to Keith Walters. Yes. Keith Walters is in the house today. Good morning, Keith. Good morning, ladies. I've got to jump in on this. Um, the job of the woman is to make the man happy. And let's let's talk about this for a second. Because oh, I feel I feel like this might be the theme. Okay, maybe. Well, this is how. Okay, let's let's talk heterosexual couples and male female male interaction on a personal level, right? So, if the woman actually does make the man happy and the man makes the woman happy, then it all works out. But the problem is, is that the, the what people run into is thinking that the other person needs to make me happy rather than putting the focus on, I need to make you happy. Like, because then it's a less selfish thing. If my goal is to make another person happy, then I'm going to get happiness in return because they're like, oh, you're so awesome. You're making. Well, that's like improv 101. Right. That's our number one rule. Going back to that, make other people look good and then you look good and then everybody looks good and everybody's happy. And yeah, so, there's a happy and then there's a happy ending. So I guess it doesn't really necessarily it's not limited to female male. No. Right, Keith? Keith? <laughs> no, I I, I I think it's got to start with making yourself happy, Ooh. owning your own feelings, and then once you're comfortable, it's uh-huh. so easy yeah. to help make somebody else happy. I agree. I agree. Well, the other flip side to it, too, is like if I'm not in a good headspace and I'm not feeling happy, the first thing that I have learn to do is to go out and and make it about somebody else so that I'm not, you know, stuck in the quagmire of my own self pity or whatever that is going on. Just go out and do something for somebody else and get out of myself. You know, that's a, that's a really good strategy. Because sometimes yeah, I just am, you I like know, that for the most part, I'm a happy person, but sometimes I just get stuck in my shit. And you have such a beautiful smile. <laughs> Look at that. Aww. Thanks. But if we want to talk about the male thing for a second, um, this is really Keith is doing. So Keith got us into <laughs> Pussy a Reclamation, the book, and I became a super fan. And Rachel and Me I have too. been talking about we want to do this. Um, you know, we we really want to focus all of our time now on the Pussy Reclamation for Women. And that's a whole nother topic that we need to run by Keith in a, <laughs> in a business discussion. Uh, but I got I got into Regina Tomashar's all of her books. So I just finished reading. I forget the exact title. It's the book of like how to man it, how to deal with men. It's Regina's book about men. And it is and she even is really clear in the book. Like, men, if you are reading this book, put this book down now. This book is not get away from the book. So Keith will run to read it, I'm sure. Have you already but read it? it? Is, <laughs> I have not read that one, but. It is it is really powerful because um, I wish I would have read it like twenty years ago because she talks about how how men are wired in regards to they have this true desire to please they want to please and in return they would just like to be appreciated for it so she gives you all these exercises of things to do to start practicing letting men do things. 
and then saying thank you. It was a it was a big aha. So that's sort of an interesting how does how does that play out in business? But I'd love to I'd love to hear Keith's thoughts in general on that. Well, I think I think it gets back to something we've talked a lot about. And, and you know, there's a there's a woman that mentors me who's very much into this. And she actually has some book clubs on on Regina's approach and other things. And I ought to get her on sometime. But, um, you know, we've talked a lot about owning yourself. Right. And owning who you are. And I think that's a lot of what that's about is is owning who you are. Mm -hmm. and owning from a, from the, from the, uh, that book, um, you know, it's a lot about owning the aspects of who you are as a woman. I I think it goes both ways though, gender wise. Oh, Oh, absolutely. It does. Absolutely. It does. But I think one of the things that we face in today's world is that, is that, um, you know, is this, is our men owning and women not owning who they are? I don't know that that's true, but that's kind of, you know, uh, one of the questions that's kind of out there. Yeah. I think in a perfect world, if we would all own, if men would own and women would own, then that would be harmony. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I think one thing that women possibly have experienced in the workforce in the world of business is that they think that they need to to perform in this masculine sort of way rather than owning their femininity and that femininity and we've definitely talked about this in the past that the the feminine approach to things is just as powerful if, as if not more powerful in certain situations but women sometimes downplay the femininity and try to be tougher and you know stronger because they think that they need to do that to operate in a male dominated world. And well, I think you just both genders, yourself. you know, you know, there's, there's, you know, I look at it, we've talked a little bit about it as masculine behaviors and feminine behaviors and women have some masculine behaviors and men have some feminine behaviors, but I think it's those behaviors are just tools and knowing when to pull which tool, yes. you know, is, is the true, um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gina, I heard that. Um, <laughs> but knowing when to use which tool is kind of the 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 mark of a you know of a well trained artist. I think you said knowing when to pull the right tool. I'm just <laughs> you, you I'm just ha- well, you have to know it. when not to pull out your tools that are not appropriate for the situation. Yes, and when not to pull the tool. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Using the right tools at the right time. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. Well, and I, and going back to knowing who you are and and truly being that person, I think it's just such a hard thing sometimes for people that don't really face their true selves. and, And that's the scariest thing to do is to, face your true self sometime and, and note what could use improvement. And then the result of that is that people show up not authentically and then they react and behave in strange ways because they're trying to cover up who they really are with who they think they ought to show up as. That's a, that's a constant issue, I think. Yep. Of trying to, I mean, I'm all about, I'm all for being a chameleon and I'm, and and you and I are both performers and actresses and we can do that, which makes us really good in sales. But at the same time, I never want to be someone I'm not. I'm pretty straightforward. So how do we use this? How do we use this kind of concept of uh, men like to please and that's how they're wired and how do we, how do we, how do we leverage that in sales and business? Hmm. I'd love Keith's advice on that. He's thinking. I am thinking. <laughs> so I, he's thinking because so I think which tool should I pull out for this one? <laughs> is what he's thinking. <laughs> no, I'm. Th- I was thinking. I, I'm going to have to go get that book and read that book because I'm wondering. You know, that wiring, how, you know, if that's truly the way men are wired, then how many men fight that wiring? Um, 
you know, and then is that a conflict, an internal conflict point that, and, you know, when someone has internal conflict, that usually has a ripple effect, you know, outside of them and impacts others around them in potentially negative ways. But, you know, I, I, I don't know that I completely agree, but um, I'd love to f- learn more about that. <laughs> So he is going to read the book that's not made for men. Awesome. I love it. And and now I'm starting to feel like Keith Walters is not a pleaser. And all this time I thought he was. Oh, I am. I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> and not just others, but myself. You know, I'm, I'm kind of more self-focused. So, um, you know, making sure that I'm pleased with what I'm doing for myself. And that, but that serves you in serving others. Yes. That's how I take that. Okay. It's not all about Keith. Oh. Oh? <laughs> Perhaps it should be. <laughs> how? What can we do to please you today, Mr. Walters? <laughs> well, but see, now let's think about that for a second. When you say that The Wire, and I have not read the book, and I'm going to switch current books with Gina here shortly. And yeah, we're, we're doing a book swap. So you're okay. going to get that and, one and I'm going to get the Ziegler book. Yeah, because I've been digging into the Tom Ziegler book. But um, I think, like, I like to please as well, though. So what does that mean about, what does she say about the women's wiring? Because I will tell you that nothing makes me happier than to please my husband. Like with, oh, I did this. Or just like simple little things or big things. Well, I, I think her point is, is that as women, because we are naturally pleasers, okay, that we forget to be pleased, ah. that we, we struggle to accept it. I think that's true. I mean, I, I, like the, really the book really opened my eyes to that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, example of why and, you think that's true, Keith. I think that, um, that women do focus on pleasing more than men and then in doing so forget to be pleased. Uh Uh-huh. And you can, you can use that. There's a lot of different ways you can term, you know, use that term about, um, able to receive as opposed to able to give. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. Now she talks a lot about the, the, the sexual aspects of it, but she also gives a lot of exercises on how to practice. Like she, she really is like, you can really have her, her whole thing is like, you can really have any man you want as a woman that it is possible to, to do that based on being accepting of what they want to give. And, but also being accepting of who they are a hundred percent. So she has these little experiments like, you know, she talks about turn on like she does in the pussy book, but she does these things where it's like, all right, let yourself get turned on by the really geeky, ugly guy that smells bad. Find something really positive about him that creates turn on for you. She she talked about how she had to, she was in one of these classes, which obviously inspired her to create her school of womanly art. She was in one of these classes where she was, put up to having a makeout session with this really ugly and attractive man. And she fought it and resisted it. And they like made her do it like for her to get to a place of acceptance, but also of receiving. It was, it was fascinating, you know, and it's more of a, of a sexual thing, but she talks about like, what can you do every day to practice accepting things from men? So like everywhere I go, <laughs> like I'm open to like, yes, open that door, Mr. Man. Yes, let me have that parking space, Mr. Like I am like every time I see a man in my vicinity, now I'm like, what can he give me? Well, you know, it goes back to some of the things we've talked about, about being willing to ask for things, you know, being comfortable with asking um, Gina and I were recording, we did a podcast where Rachel was in Paris and we had a little question exercise, right? Where just, Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Yeah. And that actually came out of some of her stuff as well. Um, the, the power of no, um, 
exercise, but, um, Oh, that was so much fun. I think I think one of the things that you start doing when you do that and you move it beyond the sexuality is that you start accepting people for who they are and in, in doing that you accept you for who they are and once you get past that then it's easier to create relationships with people and connect with them yeah. and then that's where business deals sales just connections come from and there it is boom well and the, the thing I'm- about like the sexual tension thing, you know, when it comes to someone that you love or are attracted to, there's always the possibility of some of the aspects that we are attracted to being taken away, such as someone getting in an accident and physically being um, scarred or damaged. And then would you still love that person? Because people are not what they look like and people there's there's so much deeper aspect to what a person is and we tend to compartmentalize people in in sales by how they appear to us and when we can move past that and and like you were saying keith go into what it is who it is that we are and what is our connection like you know when when she when G, Regina was in that situation with the man who she found unattractive once she let herself get into it and she allowed herself to feel the pleasure of that moment it didn't really matter what he looked like anymore it was more no. about what she was receiving because of how she allowed herself to be involved and i think that sometimes we block ourselves in relationships and sales relationships business relationships because of what our perception of the person on the other side of the table or or a telephone is, you know? You know, I think I've been really guilty of that. And and it's, and and now I'm like really kind of being introspective about it. And it's not even about on how someone physically looks, but there have been people where I just didn't connect with in a, in a business dealing where I'm like, God, that guy's a douchebag. I don't want to work with this person (laughs) and totally like blocked and, and, and I don't know, maybe it was like a defense mechanism of not even wanting to go through the sales process. Maybe I was making an excuse, but there have been times when I've been repelled by people's personalities and didn't take enough time to accept them for who they are. How many deals have I lost from that? Yeah, acceptance, acceptance. Acceptance and surrender can go back to those two words. And, you know, you can go pretty far with those two words that we forget about a lot. Keith's so quiet. He's he's thinking. (laughs) I love when he's quiet. He's like pensive and No, I'm just thinking, you know, how um, oftentimes when you're working with a prospect from a sales perspective and you're trying to create connections and you're trying to figure out ways to do it. And one of the things that, you know, uh, some of the folks I know that do it real well, you know, one, one of them, um, uh, sends out a lot of books. It would be really interesting to use that book as a connection point with, um, uh, as a female salesperson, um, when you hand a prospect a book entitled pussy, I do believe the uh, other side is going to read that book and you will be remembered. Yeah. It's such a good book though. Like what's really interesting is, that and, and when Keith first mentioned this book, when we were Keith like, first talked about this book. I was cringing. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. And she, and Regina talks about this in her book is that the word pussy freaks people out. You know, it, it, it there's been a few I have a handful of people that I will never stop talking about whatever audiobook I'm listening to. And most of the time they're receptive. And there's a group of ladies that I was talking about this book to. And they did exactly what Regina described in her book. They cringed at this, the, at me using the word pussy. They said they hated that word. And they just ugh, and they just they could not get on board with the concepts I was trying to relay because they were already felt um disgust or whatever the emotion that they were feeling for just that word. And I had this, I had the discussion with my own child. She's 10 and she heard me saying over the phone to someone, I think it was you, Dina, that I was like, Oh yeah, it, it after was. After reading this, I just, I think I want to just quit everything I'm doing and become a pussy <laughs> expert along with Mama Gina. And so Roxy heard. And me, even I hadn't even read the book yet. And I was like, what the? What is she talking about? So Roxy heard me say this and 
we were doing our nighttime little routine at, and she said, mommy, why did you say that? What did you mean by that? And so there we went. And I said, well, I was going to probably wait a little longer to talk to you about this, but let's talk about it. So we talked about what does that word mean? And we giggled about it because, you know, Regina talks about it that, you know, the word vagina doesn't make you smile or giggle, but the word pussy does. And she was like, hee hee. And then but I got to the point, I, I said, it's not really as much about your physical body parts as it is about owning the fact that your place in this world as a, as a girl, as a woman, how important it is for you to value that and not diminish it, be ashamed of it, or you know, let someone else abuse it. It was a very interesting conversation. And, you know, I was like, well, let's, I, I, if she asks me questions, I always answer honestly as possible. It's a cool story. Yeah. She actually, uh, mama Gina actually does a, I don't know if it's a one or two day, um, thing. I think it's called the experience. She did one in March, um, where it is focused on, women bringing their daughters to the experience to kind of do go down the path that you're talking about Rachel. yes so that'll be my next my next event that because i'm organizing an event with uh nell merlino for yeah. um born worthy so there you go i don't think um keith knows about this yet oh yeah i well in the midst of really getting connected with my daughter on some things we um we did the interview with marjorie miller and then they, she mentioned um, Nell Merlino, who has created bornworthy.org, which is basically a, a weekend session of trying to help girls feel like they are worthy in this world. And, and, and Nell, Nell's the one who started the Bring Your Daughters to Work movement. Right. And so I just... Re, like told Marjorie about it and she's like, Oh, well, let me connect with you and Nell. And so it's, it's going to be August 3rd and 4th and I'm all about it because I just don't feel like there's enough opportunities for girls to feel that way. There's it's just Roxy has been dealing with Roxy and I have been dealing with a lot of bullying and a lot of the, the girl drama and not knowing how to handle the gossipy clicky nasty things that girls go through because of hormones and because of trying to figure out, are you worthy? Are you, what's your place? What, what is, what's going on? You know? So, and that, and that continues into adulthood. Sure. I still struggle with it. I, you know, I'm struggling with it now. Like who's my friend? Like what, what happened? You know, it's just, it's, it's forever. So I just want to be able to give tools to these young girls so they can understand that you do have back to the tools thing, man, (laughs) that there are tools that you can (laughs) place into your tool belt to utilize when things get tough. Yeah. And just whip it out when you, (laughs) (laughs) this is a weird conversation talking about girls empowerment and whipping out tools and the tools to use when someone whips out a tool you're unfamiliar with. That is important, too. Exactly. Yes. Well, you know, the bullying thing we've talked about before, but how much of the, you know, we've talked a little bit about the cultural influences that um, have kind of create the gender biases and the gender differences in, in activity. How much of that lends toward the bullying in the young women? Um, not sure where to go. You know, they're they're put in this place and then they're, you know, girls are told, you know, the old story about um, boys are judged on what they do. Girls are judged on how they look or, um, you know, so forth. Does that influence and is there, is there more bullying among young women than among young men? I think that's a great question. And I think that girls, I think girls have a, I think it seems to me like girls have a nastier way of bullying than boys. Seems mm-hmm. to me like boys, when they are like traditionally stories of boys bullying, they kind of beat the shit out of each other. And it's physical. It's physical. And for girls, like, and I started studying, and this is what really got me concerned, is it's the psychological bullying, and especially like what's happening on social media, that that's what's causing suicides. Like somebody 
physically hurting you, you know, usually it's kind of over and it's separated. But when it's this psychological thing of like, and what was happening to Roxy before we switched her in schools is like this one little girl was whispering to all the other little girls to not include Roxy, to not even look at her, to not talk to her. And I watched my child disintegrate. And what was so amazing is when we just, you know, I have a long story on all that of going through it and trying not to helicopter and solve it, but figure out what's really going on. When I found out that it was, you know, the adults involved as well, I removed her from the school and magically, instantly almost, saw my child come back to life when she was removed from a situation. There wasn't anything really even going on except for she was being isolated from the tribe. And she didn't understand why. And um, girls, they just, they can be so, so, so catty. And also what to your point that you just made, Keith, that how a woman looks is so important to the society. And the really most important thing is to figure out what makes a what makes each individual woman feel like they look good. Like regardless of what everybody else thinks, but like how do you show up and feel like you really look good? Oh, that's a whole nother tangent. Yeah. Because going back to this book and and now I'm starting to get the books crossed over between the pussy book and the how to deal with men book, whatever the title that is. Um, she talks a lot about Regina, Tom, Mama Gina talks a lot about what are you doing to honor yourself and build an altar to yourself. I, I know that comes up in the pussy book, but it's like, what little things are you doing to pleasure yourself? Which goes back to what Keith was saying earlier on looking at yourself first and being happy with yourself. But she talks about that pleasuring your yourself. And I'm not saying pleasure yourself that way, but although we're but not that's a that. way, right? <laughs> that is a way but those like little things that make you okay so this is probably too much information but I'm going to give it to you anyway no shocker <laughs> just to just to hear Keith's reaction so today my like pleasure thing was I'm like I'm going to put on my favorite sexiest panties that was my pleasure thing for the day because it totally changed how I feel definitely for sure I mean that and um, just whatever it takes. And we talked about this in the episode with um, Paige that for some people, for some women, Paige, Paige, Paige Spearman, Paige, right, Paige Spearman, 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 we talked pro. about for some women, it's putting on your baseball cap because that's like, like I know a girl that does um, Iron Man's and when she puts on her baseball cap, she feels the most powerful to go and do her workouts. For me, when I put on my lipstick, that's when I turn on mm-hmm. the charm. You know, that's when my my power turns on. You know, it just That's when your Corazon comes yes. out. And it what is that? It <laughs> and how do you how do you do that? And you know what, Roxy, we went through this the other morning. We had a complete and utter total meltdown because she's got this little jacket that she likes to wear. It's her Roxy jacket. It's made by the company Roxy. Mm. And she had left it oh. at her dad's house and we didn't have it for school. And I mean, she was beside herself that we did not have the correct jacket. She just didn't feel like herself. Keith. <laughs> He's thinking about your panties oh. now. It's so- <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, do you, you know, want to we, know what we, they look like? We, Keith? we talk here about my, we talk here about making sure everybody's wearing their big girl panties. So, um, right. So hopefully you are or not, but um, and it's uh, owner and operator's guide to men. And I just ordered it, but um, <laughs> you're not supposed to, it's not for you. <laughs> I won't tell anybody I read it. It's more of a research project, right? Keith? Yes. Yes. It's for, in, it, yes, it's a business expense for this um, podcast. No, it, actually, I would love for Keith to read it and get his perspective on it because, I, again, I think we can tie all this back to business and sales and how do we leverage. Well, yeah, I was going to go right there because, you know, if you if you feel like you're, you know, you're wearing the right jacket, you're wearing your Roxy jacket and you're owning yourself and you're kind of in this space 
where you're turned on to yourself and mm-hmm. your sensuality is heightened and you're connected with other people. I mean, who's going to stop you when you're going out there and, you know, um, connecting with people to make a sales call, to make a deal, whatever. I mean, your 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 average is is going to go up. Yeah. I mean, you're going to you're going to be hitting it. And even even before reading this book, you know, one of the things that we've talked about this before that I've been doing because of my hand and my appendix and, you know, and everything that I've been limited on, I have literally and I've, I never ask women. I just have automatically like, excuse me, sir, can you help me with my bag? Excuse me, sir. Can you get my bag down? And it has been so powerful using that femininity. Well, it's just asking as well. Yeah. It, it, you know, and, and maybe asking is a feminine behavior. I don't know. But, you know, if you just ask, be it male or female, then more than like and a specific ask. Right. Not a general ask, a specific yeah. ask. Yeah. More than likely people are going to try to please try to help. It's been rare. I've seen someone not help. I had like one guy roll his eyes at me. I was like, dude, please. Now you really need to get my bag down just because you're an ass. <laughs> <laughs> or it's a great filter. Now you know you don't want to deal with this prospect. Oh, yes. It's a very great filter. Nice. And the other side to having putting on the Roxy jacket or the right pair of panties or whatever, the, the right jacket, the right costume the right to go out into the world is, is it gives you that power to right in line with what Keith just said about the filter to also be able to deflect the painful moments and the criticisms that are inevitable because you know if i can give that's why i want to do this born worthy is i believe that it it's not about the other little girl that was being mean it's not about the bully it's not about the person the prospect that says no it's about how do we handle that do we cower when someone tells us no do we you know stop making calls when they you know when when we get rejection and how, mm-hmm. how best to be able to cope with that. But if, if we have no tools, if we have no armor, if we have no, no position of strength to operate from, then, then that stuff hurts even more, even more. And it happens. It just is, it's inevitable. That's why I said to Roxy, like, there's, it's not going to get any better as you get to high school. There's going to be more and more challenges. You know, being in sales, you're not going to not have rejection. Sometimes you are. And you ha- and either like, oh, okay, next. Or you're like, oh, man, what happened? What did you wrong? Why don't they like me? Or whatever, You know what I mean? Well, <laughs> you know what? You know I'm going through this right now. So this this actually actually just triggered something for me. And I haven't had a chance to talk to Keith about it, this like next evolution. So I was on another Vistage tour. And I was like pumped up in Omaha, like for a variety of reasons, but I was pumped up on um, how well I felt like I was doing in these Vistage talks on my cell like a child. And I was really pumped up because I had like three CEOs asked to talk to me for proposals for training. So I was like, damn, I knocked this shit out. The Vistage chairs were like, this was amazing. Like, and then I read my scores and some asshole gave me all ones all I'm like I was so pissed and I finally the story I started to tell myself is like there was something wrong with that guy I must have I must have triggered him for him to give me all ones and pull my score so down that even the chairs was like I I don't even know what to tell you about this and I really took it so personally and was so hurt by it and didn't even know how to rebound from that. This was like, I read my scores a couple days ago and it really set me off for the day. Did you know who the, did the person put their name on it? No. And the chair doesn't know who it is? No. Yeah. Cause if, if so, I would have, you know, just reach out and say, dude, what's going on? Well, I mean the chair, like the chair, like he felt so bad and he's like, I'm going to go out and he, and there were only five reviews that came in. Right. And so of the five reviews, and this happens in general in, in mm-hmm. like, you know, customer service complaints or you see when people get online and complain because they can and it's anonymous. Five, five board members did the review. Three of them ripped me apart. So it was like three guys or girls got in, got, did the review because they like wanted to say how bad I was. And the two were good. And then you looked at the key group that I s- spoke to, which were not CEOs. The, those groups, 
always give me extremely high scores. So that's a whole nother like interesting comparison between the employee level and the, the CEO level. But going back to how do you how do you rebound back from what almost feels like bullet like getting all ones is pretty to me mean. Well, especially because if I they, make them- they didn't give you any valuable feedback of why they thought it was only worth all ones. Right. So, Gina, what I would say is it's then up to you to determine what how you react to that. You know, you can you can look and was that person in a bad place? Do you want to do you, you know, do you want to do you want to react to that or not? What know? if they have um, so their you own can, improv speech and they wanted to yeah. just knock you out of the running? <laughs> I mean, it's not that far fetched. So so here's the question, Gina. Were you good? Was I good? Yeah. I, I fucking killed it. And then that's what counts. Boom. There you go. Yeah. Did you get some business out of it? Uh, we're in conversations. Yeah. Boom. There you go. So, so what does it matter? Own, own your own feelings. Don't let that person own your feelings. Right. And, and, you know, fine. Maybe they, that's somebody you're not going to want to deal with. Right. Right. And in, and in the moment it like, it hurt. And then I, you know, yeah. needed 24 hours to like lick my wounds over it and be like, this is not about you. Right. This is about somebody else being in a bad place because but that happens all ones. Right. And that happens in, in, in sales all the time, right? You, you, you're going to have to, just like Rachel said, you're going to have to deal with rejections. Yeah. And so the and more th- armor you put on and the, or the more of these things that you do to feel good about yourself, then the more of those things just kind of roll off, right? It's just yeah. water off the duck's back. Yeah. And um, how do you, how do you just kind of, you know, to use that to use that metaphor, um, um, how do you <laughs> how do you just get more and more wax on your back to where you know that water's just yeah. rolling off? Yeah, I mean, and I, and I will say because you know you had had counseled me a little bit on how to approach my next round, which I took your stuff, I took my my Vistage chairs input, and and went back in and made it a, a much better presentation and. I took the feedback that you and he gave me of like, you know, buck up little girl and get back on the horse. And I <laughs> keep and say those words exactly. I but used I a F, but not a B. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get back on the horse, little girl. Um, and, and I went in so confidently and I'm like, all right, I can add more content. I can do this. I can do that. And then I owned the room and I pre-surveyed them. And I was like, I was feeling like, I owned all of them. That's how I was feeling. So obviously that didn't resonate. And but now I'm going on my next Vistage tour and it's a completely different topic that they chose. So I'm starting fresh. Well, and you have to remember, this is why it's so, I find it so important for people to, and all the big boys of success and personal development will tell you the same. It's so important to read the stories or listen to the tales of people who had amazing outcomes that faced rejection over and over and over again. I mean, JK Rowling, she was rejected several times. Um, Stephen King, same thing. Like his first book was rejected so much. He threw it in the garbage and then it came back again. His wife pulled it out of the garbage. You know, the Kentucky fried chicken, Colonel Sanders, Walt Disney, all of those people, Oprah, you know, how many times was Oprah told she was, terrible she was not meant for tv like and those are it's so important to like what keith said from the very beginning of this recording be who you are because your tribe exists out there if you believe strongly enough in what what you have to say you just have to keep saying it and be prepared that a lot of people it's not for them and that's okay but what if you just gave up on your message what if J.K. Rowling yeah. gave up on her Harry Potter series? Like, what would the world be? <laughs> We'd be without Harry Potter and wands and stuff. Oh, my gosh. There wouldn't be weird kids walking around with robes on at Orlando. <laughs> well, and she wouldn't be a freaking <laughs> rich as hell after, you know, going through all the things that she did. But but it's or and also the um, the alchemist. There's that one that 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 story of the alchemist where like he sold like two copies and that was like to his parents when he first came out with that book. And now it's one of the most revered pieces of literature out there in every language. And it's just a matter of like, continue with your journey, believe in your journey and your message. 
Word. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, back to um, before we get to, uh, get ready to wrap up this episode of All Over the Place, which I think was fun. The event in August, because this episode will air before then. Let's give that some attention once again. You know, things that Rachel and I are working on are different things that can empower women and little girls as well so that they can grow up into stronger women. So the August event, while it's not uh, p- fully public yet, what are the dates on that? August 3rd and 4th, we will be holding the event in a beautiful venue here in Polly's Island. And for now, South Carolina. South Carolina. And it's a beautiful resort location. So you could just hop on a quick little vacation with your daughter, get away before going back to school. That's the point is to do it right before the kids go back to school. So they have some new tools to utilize. And for now, you can just reach out to me directly on social media. Find me as Rachel on Real Estate or as Rachel Pitts. And I'm sure we'll have some sort of um, capture page set up. Or you can visit bornworthy.org for more information. And all of that will be, we'll have that on our Facebook page. We'll probably get that on our website as well. So that information will be out there. If you ever have questions, you can also email us directly at women, women at womenyourmotherwantrip.com. Yeah, yeah, that's even better. And what's your name again? (laughs) <laughs> Rachel Pitts. Mrs. Pitts. <laughs> Rachel what? Pitts. Say it's Pitts. Pitts. And you know what? I, and like, say it I one, like Mrs. Say it one more time. Say it one Rachel, more time. Who are you? Rachel Pitts. Very good. Don't put a question mark after your last name. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, that's a really good point. You know, and th- we've been bickering, not bickering, that's a terrible word to use, discussing about the last name thing. Um, and I was kind of waffling about it because my, because of my daughter and her last name is her father's last name. And, um, but on my wedding night, when we were driving away from the wedding, we, I just was like, I'm so happy to be Mrs. Pitts. And that was the moment that I was like, I don't care what anyone else thinks. Everyone else can adjust That's awesome. because the most important person who is proud to have me to have his last name is who counts. And that was that. You. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's just, awesome. just, just own it when you say it own it yeah and it's really a habit to get out of too of like mm-hmm. da, da, da. and this is such a better habit so i like it so mrs pitts uh so we have that event coming up other things that we are working on is um do we want to reveal the name of our thing we're of creating? warner world warner world <laughs> we haven't we haven't run it by walters yet <laughs> well, we also changed it the other night, so we're not sure. But really, we're, we're trying to create Warner <laughs> Warner World, a girl game. Yes. Are we going to let guys into the girl game? Yeah. Well, hmm. honorary. Yeah. Oh, and then we we start playing with gangsta. Gangsta. Remember that look on our face. Okay, let's be honest. We don't know what the name is, but we do know <laughs> what what it's going to be, and it's going to be a private Facebook group where we, Gina and I, and Keith, of course, will be able to give um, a little bit more. If Keith gets on Facebook. Oh, yeah, he's not on Facebook. That's okay. He can contribute other ways that we can give you guys a little bit more personalized (laughs) care and um, contribute on a little bit deeper level. And um, we're excited about it. Coming soon. To the interwebs. Mm. Keith, you guys... (laughs) Keith has really been very intentional every time he speaks today. I have to be when we get onto certain topics. <laughs> uh, any, any, so um, any final thoughts from both of you? We, I know my paper's making noise, but I want to. So, so one, you know, one recap from me is, you know, and, and given that our target here ultimately sales, business, and so forth. If you feel good about yourself, you're just going to do so much better at what you do. Mm. And I, and there's so many different ways to feel good about yourself, but as a, as a woman, uh, which I'm not, so, um, you know, it would seem, you know, (laughs) embracing that, that piece of who you are, taking it to its fullest. Like it's just, it's just going to help you 
in your sales and your business and your day to day dealings? Right. hundred percent. I agree. And become more of yourself and find out what it is that makes you feel more like yourself. What is it that makes you feel at your best when you go out into the world doing what you do and agree with Keith 100% that if you can find what it is that you need and make that your routine and your habit, then you're going to come out stronger no matter what you face. And I think for me, kind of the wrap up is the importance of embracing your gender, whether you're a woman or you're a man, looking at things like tr- truly understanding that we we operate differently and how do we leverage that? So how do we leverage the femininity of asking for things? Um, I just wrote a blog about this, about asking for help, and I put people to a challenge of to go out and practice asking people for things to see what happens because when you ask people for help, they have a tendency to want to help. And then there becomes this reciprocational feeling that happens like, Oh, I like that person who helped me. What can I do for them? And take kind of that sales approach. Um, This is something I'm going to experiment with in making some sales calls of literally approaching it with, Hey, could you help me out? Cause I need to have a conversation with you about and finding a different approach in that sales conversation. So that's my, my aha, use your, use your gender and leverage it accordingly. Boom, 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 pal. It's time for us to wrap it up. We decided to go rogue today. We're totally off of our scripts. Although I, I hear Rachel picking up a script, but I don't, I don't have one in front of me. So Rach, you wanna you wanna you wanna close it up? Sure. Close up shop. Thanks everybody for listening to this episode of Women Your Mother Warned You About. To connect with myself, Rachel Pitts, Gina Tremarco, or Keith Walters, you can visit our website, Women Your Mother Warned You About dot com. You can find me all over social media, Rachel on Real Estate, or visit theclosingcurve.com. Awesome. You can also reach me at Gina Tremarco.com. That'll take you everywhere I am. And Keith, we know, how do we, how do we find Keith? Well, go to that website, women, your mother warned you about.com. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my profile's out there, takes you to LinkedIn. You can connect to me through LinkedIn. Just let me know that you uh, connected through this podcast. Awesome. Awesome. Ap- oh, I, f- I forgot to mention, I officially launched Spontaneous Selling 1.0. And where can they get that? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> On our website? <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite on our website yet, but I'll put it there. Actually, that you can go to pivot10results.com and find that. So it's exciting. Sweet. That it finally there you go. Happens. Pull the trigger. And also, guys, thank you so much for subscribing to our podcast and downloading. And we would appreciate it if you would leave us a review and a five-star rating because we just love that. And remember, for the best relationships, keep it real, raw, and relevant. And a little irreverence doesn't hurt either. Awesome. (laughs) We gotta go. (laughs) Bye, Keith. Bye, Bye, Bye. Keith. Bye, Warner. See ya. This really will get serious soon. Yeah, don't. it, It doesn't have to. I don't think anybody wants it to be serious. This has been a presentation of the Seller Die Network. For more podcasts that you can take out into the street and turn into money, visit sellerdienetwork.com.